Hi, I'm legally distinct Paul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? Constitution says you do. So why does everyone keep ignoring them? If everyone keeps walking all over you while just telling you to stop being lazy or grow up, you better call Paul. I'm willing to defend anyone who is part of Gen Z pro bono. So if you're a Gen Z gentleman, gentle lady, or any other entity, I don't discriminate against floating orbs of light, that is a hate crime, I'm willing to put my skin on the line for your comfort. To the older youngsters in the crowd, you might want to hear me out, because your younger relatives might not be as entitled and ungrateful as you thought. They have a lot of reasons to be depressed, act up, or go crazy. What if the world you used to know and the rules you used to live by just ain't it anymore? So get your judging hammers and objections ready, because this is my defense of Generation Z, brought to you by Better Call Paul. I will get you off no matter what it takes. In this video, I will address the three biggest criticisms I see thrown around when it comes to insulting the younger generations. That is entitlement, laziness, and not being special, just overdramatic. So Gen Z is struggling right now. That is not an opinion or speculation. Anyone born between the years 1997 through 2012 is going through tough times. And I've explained in my other videos why that is the case, so you can watch them later. But essentially, the western world has been experiencing a slow decrease in the quality of life, and people in their late teens to early 20s have to start building their entire lives while everything is crumbling around them. Imagine you've just gotten out of college and trade school, and the first thing you have to deal with is finding a well-paying job in a struggling economy, while also having to come to terms with the fact that you're not going to be able to go into retirement when you're 60. In fact, you probably won't get any retirement money at all, so you'll have to work what is most likely a 9 to 5 job for 40 years or more. Not to mention that there is this constant looming threat of the world just randomly ending on a Tuesday because some old men with a lot of money and power decided to drop a bunch of fat men all over the world. And of course, the old men will get to live in their super bunkers and mega yachts while the rest of us will be acting out our favorite apocalyptic shows, we just don't know which one yet. So yes, being a part of Gen Z can objectively be pretty depressing, but why is this generation in particular still so hated? I know that every single time in human history, even in ancient Mesopotamia, the older generations hated or strongly disliked the younger ones. This is nothing new. But even if we take that into consideration, there's so much hate towards Gen Z that has nothing to do with that particular generation. Or Zoomers get hate just because, and I have a lot of, let's just say, less than positive comments on my videos about Gen Z, and this is what motivated me to make this video in the first place. Things like, we don't like to work, or we hate meritocracy, or that we blame our failure on everything but ourselves. I will now categorically dismantle all of these claims, because first of all, Mr. Commenter, I blame myself for literally everything bad that happens in my life. Even if I were to get hit by a meteor, I would be like, I shouldn't have been standing near that impact crater. But seriously, as a zoomer, we don't need to avoid failure, because our entire lives can feel like one on a daily basis because we're very far behind compared to previous generations. The early 20s used to be a time to get married, start a family of your own, and decide which direction your life should go now. We can't afford any of this now due to a corrupt system and we're also really isolated as well statistically, so getting married at 24 is just not a possibility for modern 24 year olds. If you're in your 20s, you either have a car, an apartment, or a well-stacked pantry because having all three of them at the same time is pretty difficult objectively. I mean, we have to rely on double income families now to stay alive. The father used to be able to support his entire family on a single paycheck. It was literally a different world out there. And many thanks to the pandemic, we missed like three years worth of character development because of it. We also put so much time into our devices and online activities instead of getting so-called dad lore or living life to the fullest, we just look at memes when we have free time or get angry or upset at the news. We have no time for character development now. Due to technological dopamine exploitation, we just lost so much time that we can't get back to build our character. I think I can safely say that the average person is far more behind in life than let's just say 30 years ago. That is partially our fault because you can indeed just turn the computer off. But I think most of the blame can be put on modern tech business practices. And we simply didn't have previous knowledge of what social media and the internet does to our brains long term. So without any previous knowledge or protection, we got our brains collectively fried as an experiment. 
The sad thing is, we can see the many flaws of our current societal systems, but most of us won't do anything. So I don't think our predicament is our fault, and it's extremely infuriating to get blamed for things you had nothing to do with. For example, nobody voted for rent and housing prices to go up by such a ridiculous extent, but due to events out of our control, like the pandemic for example, if you know what I mean, we are now forced into a terrible economic dilemma. Nobody can get a house. Also, to those of you wondering why I'm so obsessed with housing, it's because you need a house to live, if I didn't make that obvious. And owning a house gives you a ton of security, lucrative real estate, it's cheaper, and it improves the quality of life by a lot. Some people have said that you can just rent out a studio apartment or a Hong Kong coffin home, but try to raise children in that and not go crazy. I dare you. Speaking about children, most people from millennials onwards are not able to afford to have children. This is a huge deal because not only is having children the only way our wretched species survives, it's also a dream for many people to have a family of their own, with their own home and a stable job. It's not as fancy as wanting 100 Lamborghinis or 100 models that have more plastic in them than Barbie dolls, but a lot of people are actually humble and just want those basic needs. Imagine you can have none of them. No home, no kids, and no stable job. You don't have to imagine, because we live in 2024, baby. Woo, let's go! I love AI stealing all future jobs and being told that I'm just lazy and don't have that 1% mindset. Yeah! But even if AI is taking some jobs from a lot of people, how are we lazy because of that? Admittedly, I can be very lazy sometimes, but laying in bed all day and waiting for the world to end is more akin to existential dread. Our mental health has suffered immensely due to numerous events out of our control, and we're suffering the consequences while also having our attention get exploited by multi-billion dollar corporations that no one has control over. It's a bit unfair, don't you think? Being lazy is lying in bed eating chips and watching cartoons on a work day. Working less hard because you know you'll get paid the same is not lazy. It's smart. We still work hard, it's just getting us nowhere. Working smart is the new meta now. You won't get promoted for working hard anymore. That's an old fairy tale that's used to happen and even back then, there was no real reason to stay at a company if it offers you less money for your work and makes you work overtime all the time. Quiet quitting is not lazy. It's actually one of the best things to come out of the younger people entering the workforce. Quiet quitting is the practice of only doing the bare minimum a job requires you to do. If you ask me, that's not lazy, that's actually really smart, because why should anyone go above and beyond if it isn't reflected in the salary? Working harder in the hopes of getting a promotion or a salary increase is actually extremely foolish, because while you are working oh so hard to become the assistant to the regional manager, it's completely unpaid, and if you don't get promoted, it was all for nothing. Most of the time, only a few people will be able to get a promotion out of all the workers because of the budget or simply because there are only a handful of higher up positions, so chances are, your hard work is just going to go to waste. Oh, and you can always just get laid off because the business is doing bad now. All the more reason to quiet quit. The companies profit from your hard work the most. If you get paid by the hour, then there's actually no real reason to work hard. This whole work hard work ethic actually reminds me of the prisoner's dilemma, where if only one person chooses to work hard, they benefit immensely from it, but if all people start to work hard, then your hard work loses some of its meaning and value. So it's a net negative if this becomes a standard practice for everyone. If everyone chooses to do the bare minimum, then even average workers will get promotions and raises, and the rest just get to mostly chill all day. Quiet quitting results in a net positive, all around and it takes a lot of the power away from huge companies and corporations because now younger people refuse to work for the promise of money they want direct compensation or bust working hard for the promise of eventually being compensated for it is like working for exposure to all of my artistic viewers out there never accept to work for exposure you should always be compensated for your hard work know your worth you deserve it because you're special but continuing I know that a lot of people object that guys had to work for 16 hours in the mines just to feed their family back in the day. Their struggle was real, and you don't have to compare struggles to diminish them. Everyone has their own unique problems, and just saying that the new generations are simply too lazy doesn't solve anything. The average young fella also works in the mines of Australia for hours during the hot summer. Like, for real, I have been getting Australian mining propaganda on my For You page, and blue-collar jobs didn't go extinct, obviously. 
Just because there's more opportunities to make money online that is easier than having a real hardworking job, doesn't mean we're too lazy to do them. It's just not worth it in a lot of countries. What would you do if your career options are a call center or posting reddit stories on youtube shorts and tiktok for more of the same amount of money? That's what I thought. Also, don't we all just want free money? If I had the option of doing weird faces into a camera and getting paid billions for it, I would. But alas, I'm not a 15 year old girl with a huge audience of evil and bad men. When everyone is struggling or failing at the same time, that is not an individual issue. This is a direct indication that a system failure has occurred that is causing everyone except for 1% of people or so great misery. The cost of living and the hours you need to work to survive are just too high now. It has nothing to do with hating a meritocracy system. The problem is that our merit is being rewarded less now. So why should you bother to put extra effort in? This is my case for why Gen Z isn't lazy. But this has actually occurred many times throughout history, and spoiler alert, whenever the common people get treated unfairly, something bad happens, but that begs the question, is Gen Z nothing special? I don't think so. To play devil's advocate for a moment, in the 1920s, the general atmosphere was very similar to what we have today. In fact, it was much worse actually. A global pandemic, the threat of a world war always lurking around, the Great Depression, and inflation. The same beats are happening again a hundred years later, but we're still special, because history does not repeat one to one, but it does certainly rhyme. Add the internet to the previously mentioned topics, and now everything is much worse. Even millennials didn't have to deal with a lockdown during their developmental years, so this is actually a new development for Gen Z and Gen Alpha, and these generations were born with the internet already being established, while millennials got to witness the rise of the internet. I think the current level of technology makes us so special. And I think this is where the great divide between the young and the old comes in, because a lot of older folks don't grasp the sheer scale of modern technology, the internet, and how much it impacts our daily lives. If we didn't have Skynet being built in the background, I probably wouldn't complain as much. So while every generation goes through some sort of period of great crises and decline, no generation before us went through those crises with an infinite amount of information and misinformation available. I can't emphasize this enough. Modern technology has fundamentally changed the way we think and interact on a daily basis. I think that things like social media and endless entertainment are like Siggy's back in the day. No one knows just how bad they are for health until 30 years later. To be honest, we don't even need to wait for 30 years to see the negative effects of social media and modern technologies, because most people's brains are already fried now. No more dopamine receptors, no more critical thought, just brain rotting endless consumption. Fun fact. Technology engages all circuits in the brain now, and your whole brain can become addicted or reliant on it. Not just the dopamine circuitry, that is a common misconception. So technology is the X factor that does make us different from our previous generations. And of course the pandemic that stunted our collective development. But is being special make us entitled? Let's talk about Gen Z being entitled. Now I hear this one a lot when people talk about how back in my day we only had the water hose to drink out of, a 30 year old car from West Germany and 100 acres of land and we were happy. And I have to say, some young people are definitely extremely entitled, but, and this is a big but, it's mostly internet personalities and celebrities that got rich and famous from a very young age. Because of their wealth and online influence, it may come across that all young people want money for sitting pretty. Or how live streaming twice a week to make 5 times the amount of a doctor's salary is oh so hard, but trust me, these are only those weird celebrities that have been popping up. Most people just want to be able to afford their groceries, have money for shelter, transportation, and some more for leisure and entertainment. It's just a pyramid of needs all over again. The fact that a ton of people are currently struggling to get by and have to live paycheck to paycheck, it's not entitled to desire a life with more financial security, or security in general. It's a basic human desire. The way our current system is, we actually can't fulfill any of the stages on the pyramid of needs without an immense struggle. Food is expensive. Sleep is a struggle because of late night doom scrolling. People are as lonely as ever, so very little to no human connection. Lack of morality, microplastics in our balls, veins and wombs, so bad health. Global warming is also not good for our health, actually, and no respect from our elders or even fellow peers. It's brutal out there. Gen Z is currently unable to fulfill the pyramid of needs in any meaningful capacity, and some media publications just write this off as entitlement. Newsflash, wanting to live is not entitled, and we are promised a job that we'll be able to support our future family, and that we'll be able to have children of our own someday, 
but now we can't have that fantasy, because almost no one is able to afford having children, and even if you are blessed enough to be able to afford a family, are you really willing to bring in children into a world that is falling apart? That's not entitlement, that's a promise that has not been fulfilled, and that promise of a good life has been replaced with nothing. The only things we have to look forward to is another catastrophe on the horizon, and people still wonder why so many of us have given up. The only ones that are entitled among us are the parents that expect grandchildren, it's just not possible right now. On the bright side, we have the opportunity for endless knowledge, music and art. We get to enjoy so many masterpieces for free because we are lucky enough to be born in the information age. Our world has so much potential to be amazing for everyone, but currently, it's all struggles and problems, but once we solve them, it could be the start of something beautiful. But on a different note, another reason why Gen Z isn't actually exaggerating their predicaments is the credit system. It just doesn't work the same as it used to. Back in the day, you could totally get a good credit with an average job, hold the same job position for decades, never move away, and eventually pay off your mortgage or car, etc. If you try to do that now, the banks will just start hysterically laughing at you while chanting brokey over and over again. If the average American makes around $80,000 a year, and an average house costs $465,000, how are you supposed to finance that? Real estate was less expensive back then, even with inflation, and it was not proportional to over 5 times your yearly salary. If you live paycheck to paycheck, which most US citizens do and a lot of people globally as well, then you won't be able to get the credit to get a mortgage. Banks will only loan you money if they are 100% sure you're able to pay it back one way or another. So if most people have a good chance of never being able to pay back their loans, the banks simply won't give them any. Combined with the fact that large mega corporations keep buying up houses and real estate with their billions of dollars and use it to make more money in the future, it's the 2008 real estate bubble all over again. I can't believe history repeats itself so soon. As a young man myself, I genuinely just have to hope for the housing market to collapse or just society to collapse in general, just so I have the chance of living a decent life. How could anyone possibly claim that Gen Z just hates merit or hard work or that the situation at hand is our fault? The system that has been created for people to live a normal life is gone now and it has been replaced by trying to become rich quick through crypto or social media. I can't be a firefighter even if I want to because it just doesn't pay the bills or fun fact the average salary in some Balkan countries is around 400 euros a month, so if you have a YouTube channel that makes 500 euros a month, it's actually a more valuable job opportunity than a regular 9 to 5. For real though, I kind of hate how becoming an online personality or entertainer is a much more valuable solution currently compared to working a regular job. It reminds me of the Venezuelan RuneScape players that keep farming RuneScape currency because it is more valuable than their own. This is the world that was left for us. This burning, screaming dumpster fire is all that we inherit, and some people have the gall to call young people entitled. I'm sorry that shelter and food are considered entitlement now. It's kind of hard to live on the ice soup with bread sandwich diet. I hope I could convince you that Gen Z isn't just lazy, entitled, or over-exaggerating. Man, I don't even care that I'm Gen Z. Millennials, Boomers, Gen X, it all doesn't matter in the end. We all might have been born at different times in history, and have experienced terrible events at different times in our lives, but I can say with all my heart that we're in this Kafkaesque nightmare together. We're all going through the slow degradation of our society, and we're all struggling in our own ways. If we set aside our generational differences, then we might be able to take things into our own hands, because divided we're weak and fodder to be conquered, but together, who knows what wonders we'll be able to achieve. So band together everyone, protest and revolt against this broken system any chance you get and don't blame yourself for your suffering because some weird and powerful people have created a world that induces suffering. All of these generational terms don't matter, we're all humans in the end, wanting better lives. Thank you so much for watching this video, I have a discord server linked in the description below, like and subscribe, watch more of my videos if you like this type of content, and bye bye!